everybody, it's Andrea Tooley from andreatooley.com. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm here with you today with Dr. Vaivav Vaithya, who is a fellow in cardiology here at Mayo Clinic, and he's going to tell you all about cardiology today, answer all your questions about cardiology, and tell us some amazing tips about how to be an incredible resident, an incredible fellow, and just lots of great career advice. So. Welcome, Viva. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me over, Andrea. I'm really excited to talk to you and talk to everyone about cardiology. Me too, me too. Can you start by just kind of telling us about yourself, just a little background? Uh huh. So, uh, I was born and brought up in India, which is where I did med school in Bombay, and then I moved to the United States for uh, internal medicine residency. So, I was happy to match at Mayo and uh, was interested in cardiology coming into medicine, but being at Mayo, watching the cardiologists here really intensified that interest. Um, I also got a lot into uh, electrophysiology uh, during my time at Mayo. I found that very interesting, and so I ended up applying for a fellowship and matched here for my cardiology fellowship. And so you just started CARDS Fellowship. That's right. I'm two months in and I'm enjoying it. It's great. Oh, that's excellent. Yep. So what is the timeline? How many years did you spend in medical school and then residency? And then what's the cardiology timeline? Yeah. So um, kind of starting at residency. Residency in internal medicine is a three-year uh, track at most places. Uh, you know, so when you guys are fourth year medical students will be applying for internal medicine residency, you'll find out that you matched in March and then that July you'll start your internal medicine training. Now the fellowship timeline has changed a little bit from the previous years. So now fellowship applications will go out in your third year of internal medicine residency. Okay. So when you begin your, uh, when you begin your third year in July, that's when you'll be applying for fellowship. Interviews typically take place between Kind of September to um, October, early November, and then match day is in the middle of your third year in December. Okay, so by the middle of your third year, you'll find out where you've matched. Then comes cardiology. So cardiology starts immediately after your residency. Most programs are typical three-year programs, and with three years, you'll come out with a degree in uh, general cardiology. Okay, you'll be allowed okay. to practice general cardiology. However, there are some programs out there, including Mayo Clinic, which mm -hmm. is actually a four-year program. That's because oh. they have a year of research that's inbuilt into the program. So that's why oh. it extends the time of training by one year. That's nice. Yeah, that's great, you know, and because that, that's, the, if you find something like that, it's excellent, especially if you're interested in academic medicine, because it's so difficult otherwise to find a year that's paid for already, mm -hmm. that like, in which you can just pursue your research interest without having to look for funding yourself. Oh, right. That makes so, sense. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so some programs will be four-year programs. Okay. No. So, so you did, after medical school, three years of regular internal medicine That's residency right. mm -hmm. where you just learn how to be an adult doctor. Exactly. And then three or four more years of cardiology. That's exactly right. And then what happens when you're a cardiologist? What do cardiologists do? What's the job? Can you tell us? kind of what the job is like and what kind of things you do as a cardiologist? The job is amazing, right? <laughs> okay. first of all, yeah. So basically, as an adult cardiologist, you're, treat, you're treating all kinds of heart disease. You know, you, heart disease is the commonest cause of death even now in right. Western world, and it's pretty high cause of death even in developing countries. So yeah. mainly you're treating ischemic heart disease, which is coronary artery disease. Okay. You know, um, so as a general cardiologist, you'll be seeing patients in clinic, okay? Okay. Um, you'll be seeing patients in the hospital very often. You might be admitting them to your service or you might be seeing them as consults. Okay. As a general cardiologist, most cardiologists will be expected to be able to you know, read EKGs, read echocardiograms, mm -hmm. and then depending on what you choose to do during your fellowship, you might be certified to do additional things. Okay. These additional things could be nuclear imaging, it oh. could be CT imaging of the heart, uh -huh. it could be MR imaging of the heart, uh -huh. it could be diagnostic coronary angiography. Okay. All right, and uh, those are the things that you can pick uh, to be specialized in just coming out of general fellowship. Okay. All right, but there are so many other things that cardiologists can do now Yeah. that requires additional training beyond those three years. All right. All right. After fellowship. After fellowship, exactly. Okay. So you could just stop at general cardiology and be someone who sees patients in the clinic, sees mm -hmm. patients in the hospital, mm -hmm. does, um, you know, echo reading and maybe 
does diagnostic CATs or does uh, nuclear imaging. Okay. Okay. But if you want further training, then you can do other things, which I can tell you about. Okay. Yeah. All so right? tell us the other things that you can do Sounds after good. fellowship. Sounds good. So after <laughs> three years of cardiology fellowship, okay, one thing people are very interested in, whenever they think about a cardiologist, they think about someone who can put a stent inside a coronary artery to right. treat a heart attack or to treat what we would call stable angina. Okay. So that requires an additional year of training. Okay. okay. It's called an interventional cardiology fellowship. Okay. So that will take your training time to three years of medicine, three years of cardiology, plus one year of interventional cardiology fellowship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so that will give you the ability to treat acute heart attacks with stents and put stents in the heart. Very now cool. there is a there is an evolving specialty that you can be involved in after interventional cardiology. Okay, so if you do an additional year after interventional cardiology, there's an evolving specialty called structural heart disease. Ah. What structural heart disease doctors do is they are experts at altering or repairing the structure of the heart, not by surgery, but by percutaneous means. Wow. So if someone has severe aortic stenosis, they could put a valve in there, a tab or valve in there right. to treat that. They could close ASDs percutaneously, they could uh -huh. close the left atrial appendage percutaneously, and that's the kind of stuff you can do if you treat or train for one more year wow. after interventional cardiology. So that's incredible. That means you can do the same kinds of things that heart surgeons are doing without doing a surgical residency and you can replace heart valves and do all of this through vessels and, and through the skin without doing open surgery. Yeah, it's a very exciting field. I wouldn't say that we replace everything that surgeons do. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the patients that we do these procedures on are high risk for surgery. Okay. So so surgeons may not want to operate on them. Right. But even if they do, they'll be high risk patients. Okay. So, but it is very similar to what surgeons are doing right you can do that percutaneously now and that's great for those patients yeah. who it would be dangerous to take them to the OR but you can still help them uh -huh. treat their disease give them a better quality of life Definitely. without doing surgery yep having seen these patients in the hospital and in the clinic I can yeah. tell you it's a very fulfilling experience because a lot of these patients are like very short of breath Mm -hmm. very limited because of their symptoms and you know a lot of these problems are just mechanical in nature like aortic stenosis is just a mechanical problem just right. can't get enough blood across so once you fix the valve their symptoms improve pretty quickly you know so it's very yeah. gratifying to see that sure yeah. and i bet the patients are grateful oh they're very happy yeah good usually, yeah. happy patients <laughs> what kind of things do you think uh, what aspects of cardiology drew you to the field what are the specific things about cardiology that you really liked yeah, there's just so many things that drew me to the field, actually. So, one thing is, it's just so common, you know, heart disease right. is still one of the leading killers in America and elsewhere, as I mentioned previously, mm -hmm. so it's just so common, it's still out there. Um, it's very interesting from a physiology perspective, mm -hmm. cardiac physiology has always interested me, mm -hmm. knowing more about the cardiac cycle, learning about the physical exam and putting that in context of a patient's mm -hmm. physiology has always been very interesting. Um, I like the fact that cardiology is very data driven. We have a okay. lot of data behind what we do. Right, okay. huge studies. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So a lot of evidence backs up what a lot of cardiologists do. Definitely. It's always been uh, interesting to me. Um, the other thing that's great about cardiology is uh, that the research is ongoing, you know. Uh, yeah. There's so much that's being developed. Like all, all that we talked about with structural heart disease, uh, mm -hmm. that's just been developed over the last 10 years or so. And it's gonna keep evolving. Yeah. You know, so it's exciting to be a part of that process, to be a part of that change. Right. So that's another thing that kind of drew me towards cardiology. And uh, yeah, I think those were the main things. Those yeah. are all good things to look for. Yeah. I mean, huge patient population, so mm -hmm. many different avenues that you can focus on. Yep. Um, like we said, really gratifying how you're helping all these people. Definitely. And you're really passionate about cardiology. You're thinking about starting a blog. Have you started it? I am. I've not started it yet. Okay. I, think, I think this is great because you get to connect with so many people. Mm -hmm. You get to hear thoughts from so many people and really uh, you, know, you can impart your own knowledge and you grow yourself listening to other people's thoughts as well. Yep. So I've been thinking about it off and on. So, you know, if I do start a blog, you'll be the first to know. Good, okay, so. good. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. when you start your blog, I'll post the address in this video so you can check the information in this video and see 
We've got a cardiology blog. Yeah, that would be, be wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah. Really good. So if you say you're um, a high school student or a college student, a pre-med, or even in medical school, and you think cardiology is something that's interesting to you, or maybe you, you want to do cardiology, uh -huh. what kind of advice would you give those people? What should they be doing or thinking about to get down the cardiology career path? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. So um, the first thing would be to start reading more about cardiology. That's you know, a good there tip. There several excellent textbooks out there about cardiology. Okay. And um, you can't see something if you don't know about it beforehand. Yeah. You know? Uh huh. So if once you've read something, you'll be able to recognize it. Right. And pick it up, and it just then sits in your brain. You know, once mm -hmm. you've read something, you've seen it. So try and read more about cardiology. If you're a med student, try and do electives in cardiology. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be a great option. So an elective such as flow rotation in cardiology or a cardiology concert service will give you a lot of exposure to cardiology fellows, attendings, and patients. Right. You know, so that'll help you not only develop your understanding and developing your approach to managing these patients, but it'll also help you in terms of uh, letters and, bit and networking with, right. with those professionals. You know? uh -huh. So um, another thing that I would advise, especially med students to do, if you know you're interested in mm -hmm. cardiology, is to get involved in research early. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because research matters a lot when it comes to uh, applying for fellowships and getting into fellowships. Right. And it's a very gratifying experience by itself. You yes. Know, you learn a lot and um, you know if someday someone uses the research that you've done you feel great about it sure so so get involved with research early on find a mentor who uh, wants to take you to where you want to be okay so i think those would be the main things read clinically see patients yep. and then get involved in research get involved in research on. that's really good okay any other advice or anything you want to tell the world about cardiology or any pre-med advice out there um well there's just so much to talk about in terms of the options for cardiology like i just told you about interventional and structural those are a couple of things that you can do after sure. cardiology fellowship but there's just so much else that you can do you can do imaging that focuses right. only on echo ct mri you can do electrophysiology which is the main thing that i'm interested in which is just putting in pacemakers and treating arrhythmia specifically sure and then there's this whole other field called heart failure and heart failure related treatments you know okay which involves heart transplants and so on so wow. there's a lot you can do after fellowship so especially if you want to have an academic practice mm -hmm. you should just keep at the back of your mind that you're probably committing to more than three years uh -huh. okay. you're probably gonna have to do some kind of advanced training that's good to know yeah. see there's all these things even I didn't know about all the different options after fellowship and uh -huh. all the different little areas you can specialize in mm -hmm. so if I was pre-med or if I was even in medical school it's hard to know about all these different potential options mm -hmm. how many different are there are there different like sub fellowships or is it just kind of you make your own career there are sub fellowships a lot of these fellowships are through ERAS and they'll be uh -huh. You know, you'll have to take a board exam after you're done with it. Oh, okay. So these are very specific tracks which are existing now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. So many cool things. Yeah. And I'm really glad you're here talking about cardiology because I've been very open about how cards is not my favorite. <laughs> it's so hard. It's really challenging. Do you remember that time that we were doing um, morning report in medicine uh -huh. and there was something about EKG and you were just like, I was like no. No. I not can't interested. Do it. I'm not with this. I know, it's it so was, bad. It was funny. Yeah. See, that's how we met. So, <laughs> when I was doing my intern year uh, on one of my medicine months, you were one of the seniors. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, uh, Vibab was always teaching us things, and he was so passionate about cardiology, and I was like, I don't want to know. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> that was funny, yeah. So, hopefully, I can inspire someone. Yes, yep. don't be afraid of cardiology. It's really incredible. and you're right you help the patients so much and there's a huge population it's mm -hmm. really great yes. and i'm glad you're enjoying your fellowship yeah yeah i'm really happy and i'm excited to see like what the next three years bring excellent well thank you everyone so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video new videos every monday and if you need any more information you can always find me at andreatuli.com on instagram or twitter talk to you later bye bye, -bye.